Baroness, what has happened? This was not for you, Javi. Like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Origins before it, Assassin's Creed Valhalla continues the series' trajectory into a full-fledged open-world RPG. Though Ubisoft has dug up some of its stealth action roots to make that style more appealing, Valhalla's focus is on the absolutely massive recreation of Dark Ages England, brought to life with stunning beauty and a level of detail I've rarely seen. And it's been an impressive showcase for the Xbox Series X, playing in 4K and a near constant 60 frames per second. You have to put up with some new progression system ideas that don't quite deliver, and an abundance of bugs, but there's a staggering number of things to do, explore, and discover in and around Valhalla's more atmospheric storytelling. The main story follows Eivor, their brother Sigurd, and the friends and enemies they make throughout their exodus from the frozen fjords of Norway as Viking Wunderkinder. I smell the stink of a dozen kingdoms in your beard. It's just a start. <laughs> their search for wealth and glory in England's rolling hills, lush forests, and political upheaval is darker and sadder and more grounded than the past few games had led me to expect, with hard decision making that left me reeling. And that's all propped up by main characters delivering some intense and haunting performances. This was the fate woven for me, so I live it. This vast world is home to clashes between Danes, Norse, Saxons, Britons, Picts, the word of Christ, pagan mysticism, and Norse mythology, complete with an excellent use of the Pantheon and an interpretation of Asgard I am stupidly excited for everyone to see. The Assassins vs. Order of the Ancients dynamic starts softly, almost optionally, slowly acclimating Eivor into the ways of the Assassin by weaving in and out of this tale with admirable restraint before the usual Dan Brownification picks up and reveals everything is touched by these organizations. But the focus rarely shifts completely from Eivor's more engaging efforts to build a network of alliances throughout England's Four Kingdoms and its many, many shires. That's a bread knife, my lord. Do you mean to butter me? Stay back! Back, I say! I'll fight you! Many of Valhalla's consistent high points come as you lead your Viking clan in raids against the gold-swollen churches and monasteries of England. <laughs> Bloated with supplies and materials needed to build your new settlement that acts as your home base and quest hub. The pageantry of raiding is powerful, as thatch roof huts erupt in flames while priests and villagers wail and scurry throughout the fray. The medievalness of it all is cranked up another notch in assaults on fortresses and castles, which serve as the payoffs for longer quest chains. Breaking through defenses and working toward the inner keep is a very cool spectacle. And, oh my god, are these places incredible to behold. I know it's common to gush over a big Ubisoft open world, but Valhalla might be its most gorgeous and detailed yet. I've regularly forgotten what I was doing when I turn a bend in a snaking river and get blasted by the golden sun, or the clouds and mist roll across its swamps and forests and the lingering bones of the Roman Empire. It's absolutely stunning on the Xbox Series X. And it's not just for show. I shot a fox from what seemed like a mile away thanks to incredible draw distances. And it's unbelievable to me that load times are virtually non-existent when the fidelity is this high. While Valhalla faithfully sticks to the open world script of Origins and Odyssey, there are some new systems in play for better or worse. This time around, skill progression and abilities rub me the wrong way for two reasons. First, you have to spend points to reach and reveal the next cluster of unlockable skills before you have any idea what's in it or whether it's something you want to work toward. And secondly, these are more passive skills that augment combat rather than introducing new abilities. Granted, a lot of them are incredibly useful, vital even, but the majority are unexciting stat upgrades. The game-changing new abilities are hidden throughout the world in Books of Knowledge. So unless you're exploring and hunting for them from the get-go, the big-ticket abilities like the Bull Rush, or a Ground and Pound, or that infamous kick may or may not end up in your arsenal for dozens of hours. 
Because of this, the first 10 or 15 hours, I felt like Valhalla's combat was underwhelming next to Odyssey's bombastic style and flair. I was eventually proven wrong, of course, and it became flexible and fluid and brutal as ever. <laughs> And it even brings back instant assassinations if you want to go back to that old style of stealth. It just takes way too long to start adding that complexity. So especially if this isn't your first Assassin's Creed game, the initial scuffles are some very bland hack and slash. On the other hand, I love what they've done with inventory and quests here. For instance, there's less loot in Valhalla, so instead of finding 400 junk-level bearded axes that you'll inevitably sell to a merchant anyway, Valhalla gives you different kinds of the archetypal axe or shield or greatsword. Each version is statistically slightly different and carries passive bonuses for flavor preference, but if you find one you like, you can invest in it and upgrade its quality and its level. It's so much less of a hassle and more rewarding in the long run. The other great change is in the greater flexibility and organic discovery of side quests and activities. Ubisoft has done away with the cascading lists of side quests to track in favor of revealing color-coded points of interest on the map for mysteries, wealth, and artifacts. Often you'll find one of the many insane and lighthearted side stories, like one involving a crazy cat lady. Mm, my pretty babies. But it could also be a place of mystical power, a psychedelic hallucination challenge, or an ambush by bandits. Their quick reprieves from the darker, heavier tones of the long, multi-part main story quests, and the freedom to pick what you want to do feels liberating. A visitor for Chad the Bewilderer, the most radiant and rakish riddler, do you have the wits to best me? There is cake in it if you do. No matter where you go in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, though, you're sure to encounter some... let's call them quirks. Everyone and everything here is fighting a common foe. A large number of bugs and technical hiccups that span the spectrum of hilarious, annoying, frustrating, and downright broken. I've run into a half dozen hard crashes like this, breakable items that are anything but, staircases that had one job, Enemy AI that is... odd? Nitro-powered rowboats, David Blaine, quests that get stuck for one reason or another, HUD elements that overlap or stay on screen, enemies that inexplicably regain health, and the ability to survive any fall as long as you attack on the way down, among others. You get it, Valhalla is buggy. Real buggy. That said, it wasn't overpowering. Looking back after 60 hours played, all those nagging issues feel like small footnotes in what's otherwise been many great hours of exploration and discovery. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a big, bold, and ridiculously beautiful entry to the series that finally delivers on that much-requested era of the Viking and the messy political melting pot of England's Dark Ages. It walks a fine line between historical tourism, top-shelf conspiracy theory, and veiled mysticism against the backdrop of a grounded, focused story. Fresh takes on the series' established loot and quest systems help to keep things fluid and nuanced, though progression could use some refinement. There's also a bigger-than-usual horde of bugs and blemishes to contend with from start to finish. But while it may not be the most stylish or polished, its rugged and brutal look at the muddy business of Scandinavian expansion is as memorable and dense as an Assassin's Creed has ever been, and it makes great use of the new consoles. For more on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, check out the first minutes of gameplay in 4K 60 frames per second on Xbox Series X, and watch our guide to the 9th century Britain. And for everything else, stick with IGN. Huh.